I think deep brain stimulation has a very important role in the treatment of dystonia patients, especially, of course, in patients with generalized or segmented dystonia. But even now, patients with focal dystonia, like cervical dystonia, are treated when um, other therapies um, are have proven not successful. So um, all patients that are medication refractory, um, they should be discussed or considered for deep brain stimulation. And uh, for the cervical dystonia patients, um, this is after unsuccessful botulinum toxin treatment. There have been big, uh, large trials, um, multi-centered trials with uh, the SPIDE group uh, from France in the early 2000s and the German um, multi-center sham control trial that have proven um, new modulation, so pallidal deep brain simulation successful in dystonia. And I can um, just uh, tell from my personal experience also with patients, especially also with young patients undergoing deep brain stimulation that it is a very successful treatment in isolated dystonia when uh, patients are wheelchair bound or even bedridden and they um, can after the treatment slowly um, come back to normal life, can participate in life, can go to school, the kids. Um, so we, I will give an overview on these indications. I will discuss predictors like genetic uh, factors, um, uh, also um, the duration of the treatment response and the best uh, moment uh, when to consider deep brain stimulation for these patients. Usually um, the patients present um, with severe generalized dystonia and often medication refractory so at that time, um, it's a time for deep brain stimulation. There are no other good treatment options for these patients. And um, larger meta-analysis have also shown that um, the younger onset patients with a shorter time lift with dystonia have the best outcome. So we shouldn't wait um, too long. Usually, um, deep brain stimulation is performed after the age of um, five years. And um, there, there are no limitations thereafter.